the studio never saw the script. They never saw dailies. And he handed the pages out every day to the actors. That's how much control this man had. So he walks over to me and he grabs me by the hair right here and he says, and furthermore, by the way, there'll be nobody with hair this long on this movie. <laughs> Rob Ward, welcome to A Word on Westerns. Uh, today we're going to talk about a director that you probably don't know much about, Richard Brooks. He's done some fabulous films. We have a stunt coordinator, Billy Burton, who worked quite often with Richard Brooks, and we're going to find out more about him right now. You ran those horses across the river, the Rio Grande, when you were making a Lonesome Dove. Yes. A very dramatic scene in the first part of that uh, yes. miniseries. Uh, you were lucky to be a part of that, and they were lucky to have you, I think. I, I, that was one of my favorite scenes because, first of all, there was an old extra named Johnny Quijada. I don't know if you all remember him, but he was around forever. So he got to play Juan Flores. And we go down to Mexico that night, and we steal all Juan's horses. Lonesome Dove was built right on the banks of the Rio Grande, Del Rio, Texas. And that alone just was like, made my hair stand up. Just every day we'd walk out there. The story begins when fugitive Jake Spoon arrives in Lonesome Dove, Texas. I smell an opportunity when it's right under my nose. And so we got to drive those horses from Mexico across the Rio Grande River and right down the main street of Lonesome Dove over the bridge and in the corrals. And to me, that was like, that's one of my favorite memories, actually, because of, of the location, basically. And the guy that built the town, Kerry White, did an amazing job. Boy, it's a, an incredible series that just continues to hold up, too. Totally, yeah. yeah. There'll never be another one like it. Mm -mm. One of the highest grossing westerns of all time is a comedy, Blazing Saddles. Billy worked on that, of course. So what was that like working on Mel's movie? I, I worked, uh, it was fun. I only worked a few days on it. It was, uh, Al Wyatt was a coordinator, and, and it was a, uh, it was always fun in those days. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun on all those movies we were talking about. Today, I think everybody's too serious. Well, and they just don't make the Westerns like they used to. No. Have you seen? Brothers, Sisters? That sucks. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof. I took my screener and I cut it in half. And... Oh! <laughs> I was really disappointed in that because I had yeah. read the, the novel and the novel was wonderful. I was so looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. I was so looking forward to the Coen brothers making that film yeah. because they would have uh, it would have been a different film. Yeah. But, Good cast. Yeah. But it was just. So work. of the westerns, and we're talking about some that aren't so good. What is good that you like that you weren't involved in? Oh, the man who shot Liberty Valance. I mean, one of, one of my all-time favorite, and one of my all-time favorite movies. I, it was before I came in the movies that Bert did was the Professionals, Richard oh, Brooks movie. Yeah. Awesome, uh, one yeah. of my favorite movies to this day, and I did three movies with Richard, mm -hmm. and I loved him dearly, and we, we were great, ended up being great friends. Lee Marvin, uh, Bert, of course, uh, Robert Ryan, Woody Strode, Claudia Cardinale, Jack Palance, yes. Maurice Jarre, yes. uh, Score. Yes. A great film, and great movie. Bert got to show off his athleticism, how he was able to escape at the beginning to set up the pieces. It's just a brilliant, brilliant movie. Brilliant. Richard was a brilliant man. Mm -hmm. uh, what made him so brilliant? He was a great writer, mm -hmm. and he said, in order to be a great writer, you must be a great reader. I'll never, he, he said so many things that were so poignant that he had to have quiet on the set and he demanded it and he would scream. And, and so one day we were all talking on another movie and he screamed, just shut up. And he said, and you too, Billy. And I went, <laughs> so, so we get to his little desk. And we had, we had this little wooden desk and a chair and uh, he was an ex-Marine. And so everything was, Marine and, and no comforts. And so he said, we sat down to do our little homework and he said, you know why I have to have a quiet? I said, no, sir. He said, so I can hear the music. Hmm. And I went, oh my gosh. 
I can hear the music. And I went, amazing, amazing. What film was that? Wrong is Right, which was so far ahead of its time, I couldn't even believe it, because I didn't even really realize what was going on. It was all about terrorists. And he had me on every, jumping off every building, and he had a, had a waist, a belt waist with all these uh, rockets coming off an explosion, you know? And I would jump off something, and I would press, hit my watch and blow myself up, and that's, that was what the, uh, the part of it was. And uh, Sean Connery, mm -hmm. uh, Catherine Ross, uh, and it was, he was so far, uh, he had that terror, that before terrorism ever hit it. I was on the top of the World Trade Center, snowing in about 10 degrees. He had me in a bomb suit, diffusing a bomb. He had me do everything in a movie. I, I played two parts in Bite the Bullet, <laughs> or three or four for that matter. Well, that's a great movie too, Bite the Bullet. One of his best, I think, too. Uh, Gene Hackman, now there's somebody who actually looks great on a horse. A lot of people don't. I don't know how well he rides, but boy, it looked like he could. Did a good job. He really Maybe did. it was the horse. Great horse, old Bucky with Rudy Oglins. He, many a, many actor rode uh, Bucky in a lot of movies, mm -hmm. uh, actress and actress. That was. Uh, I interviewed with Richard in this office, and Richard never had a stunt coordinator, so all those guys were, you know, he'd hire us all. And he gave this big spiel, and I had hair down about here, and, and so we're, he's telling us now, we're on the set, and anybody asks you what we're doing, you tell them you don't know. You don't tell nobody <laughs> nothing. The studio never saw the script, they never saw dailies, and he handed the pages out every day to the actors. That's how much control this man had. Mm -hmm. So he said, he's, the big spiel was, don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. So then he's walking around there and he's doing his marine thing and he walks over me and he grabs me by the hair right here and he says, and furthermore, by the way, there'll be nobody with hair this long on this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like, and I loved him for it. The, uh, the last day of the movie, uh, uh, Tommy Shaw says, Burton, go get dressed, we're all leaving. And I'd just done a run in Dublin, Dublin Jan Michael Vince and a gray horse, if you know what the movie they were, where they shoot him. And I come back to set and I'm in my civvies and Brooke sees me, he says, you're a f up. <laughs> I said, no sir, I'm not. <laughs> he said, go get dressed. <laughs> so, so I ran back, he got dressed, did some other stuff. But he was, he was a general, he was amazing. I, I, I never, he was a protege of John Huston's, really. Hmm. Yeah, he wrote some films yes. that Houston directed. Yes, uh, yeah, for, his real name was Irwin Swartz or something <laughs> like that. Uh, Jewish fellow. Glad he changed it, that's a better yeah. director's name. And uh, uh, Combs knows him well. We're, we're working in New York City on that, on that wrong is right. And somebody bratted Combs' his nose and the blood, <laughs> blood's pouring out his face. Get the camera over here! <laughs> <laughs> we flew home from, we, we shot two or three days in New York and flew to uh, San Antonio, Texas in the morning. This is a Sean Connery film. Yeah. We get to the, and we did uh, from lunchtime Got off the plane, and then the rest of the day we did 58 setups. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Did he use the same cameraman? I think Conrad Hall shot uh, uh, the professionals. Yeah, he didn't always use the same cameraman. He shot Blackboard Jungle in uh, 12 days. Wow. wow. He, 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 yeah. he, well, he wrote it. He, 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 it was all right here. You that's, know? What, that's the one where Sidney Poitier plays a high school kid. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the, Jamie Farr. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, Mark Rydell. Uh, one oh, of the, the cast. Kids, yeah. was I cast. forget the young, the young lady. Uh, she was famous. Uh, Anyway, it was, he was an amazing guy. He, I'm, glad, I'm glad you talked about him because people don't really bring up Richard Brooks very often. They don't, and I often, uh, often wonder why.
My name is Rob Word, and we love bringing these programs to you. We've got a lot more scheduled coming up. We post a new one every single week, and we want you to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching.